Hello. Oh, you look nice tonight. Oh, thank you. I got this really cool Captain America sweater at Comic Con. Oh, okay. It was like a con exclusive, and they had to ship it to me, and I love it. It's good. It's good. <sighs> so, how's your week been? Not too bad. I mean, um, yesterday we had a miracle. Peggy and Simba like almost played several times. Almost. Almost, which is a breakthrough because usually she hates him. But I think she finally figured out he's trying to play and not murder her. And now she's just trying to figure out how she feels about that. So. I've been, <clears throat> Sarah has been in uh, Minnesota visiting her mom. She gets back tomorrow, but I've been dealing with the pets by myself. Lucky you. Which is everyone's like what you got a cat and a dog that's no big deal it's just like what it's still all right um I mean, Loki's more than a dog he's like a force of nature loki it is fall here in the south for whatever that's worth you know it, it doesn't even really get to be fall fall for like we get it for like five minutes and then it's over but we have a yard full of leaves and acorns now, i want to remind you loki is a dog he is a labrador hound mix he is a dog not a squirrel. And yet, every time I try to take him outside right now in the yard, number one, he will not go outside without someone who goes with him. Even though he has a yard, he's not on a leash, he can go anywhere he wants, he refuses to go in the yard unless somebody comes with him. He needs a yard, buddy. And second, now trying to get him to poop has become a production number because he is trying, before he poops, he will sniff every single acorn he comes across. Not a squirrel, a dog. Sniffs every single acorn. And now he's taken to eating the acorns. Throwing up the acorns. And then eating those exact acorns again. Oh, why do dogs eat vomit? Dan, Dan's mom's beagle used to eat the cat's poop out of the litter box. He does that too. Like, can that possibly taste good? He so... does it. He does that. That's why we keep it behind a baby gate so we can't get at it. He eats the like poop. Does the dog not have taste buds? I don't. <sighs> I love him. I want to stress, I love Loki. He's a wonderful dog, but he's just so... Con what the hell, dog? Why? Yeah, we don't really got to worry. Like, the cats have boxes, and they poop in them whenever the fuck they want. <laughs> and that's the beauty of the cat. Grady would just poop in the box. It's done. I, I He poops in the Dan box. Dan has been continually amazed. We have the kind of litter boxes where they, they have, like, clay pellets. And you scoop the poop, but then the pee goes down through a little, like, sieve, and there's a pee pad, and you change that once a week. <clears throat> Simba pees, like, twice as much in an average week than both cats, because he only uses his own litter box, and they only use their own. Like, they don't share bathrooms. He pees twice as much in a week as two cats using the same litter box. Like, I don't know what his deal is, but he just drinks water and pees. Like, there's no tomorrow. It's and Dan's like, I've never seen a cat that pees like this. Like, is he okay? And I'm like, he's fine. He just pees a lot. <laughs> he's hydrated. <laughs> and like, we've taken him to the vet. He's fine. Everything's cool. Well. Oh, all right. To get started with the bullshit. Hey, you know what we haven't had a whole lot of that's kind of surprising me? I it kind of gets pushed off the front page these days, but... We didn't do an intro. Well, we haven't yet. I'm getting oh, right. okay. I thought you were jumping right in. I oh, was no. like, you forgot the thing. The yeah. thing I still don't know the words to after a billion years. Simba is not diabetic. We had him checked. He's okay. He just really likes water. Who does it? It's, it's good for you. It is good for you. All right. And he doesn't super like wet food, and that's where most cats get most of their hydration, so I'm cool with him liking water. Each week, cats and the Radio Dead Air audience go out on the worldwide interweb, find all sorts of horrible stuff, bring it back here for a little segment we like to call... What the fuck is wrong with you? And this week, like I was saying, it's it's been a while since we've gone full-on naked rampage. Ooh! But, you know, 
it, it's I, I feel like in these in these complicated times we, we we've forgotten the, the the true importance come on of of the naked rampage the the place it has in our cultural history back, back to our roots yeah exactly where it all started for us i mean maybe not for you i think you've been doing this bit longer than i've been on it oh yeah i this one has video and i can't show you that video cuz naked so naked so amazingly naked <sighs> I saw this, and dear God. Toronto police looking for man who jumped into Shark Tank at Ripley's Aquarium. That's not safe. An unidentified man stunned patrons of a popular Toronto aquarium when he stripped naked, hopped a security barrier, and jumped into a large shark tank during a jazz night at the facility. I dare you to make less sense. The man spent several minutes swimming in the tank with sand tiger sharks, sawfish, and moray eels. And one sawfish. At one point, according to officials and videos posted online, the man briefly paused to swim and appeared to be getting out at the urging of security guards. A moment later, he dove backward into the tank as onlookers let out a cheer. Don't encourage him. No. What are you doing? I mean, the thing is, mostly sharks don't give a fuck about humans. Unless you're actively bleeding or they're actively starving. They're not, and the ones at the aquarium are not fucking starving. So, like, they probably didn't give a fuck about him. They were just like, what, what, what's, what's wrong with you? Yeah, but well, still, don't, I wouldn't advise it. They're, they are predatory animals. Don't startle them. Yeah. Don't startle them with your penis. There's a moray eel in there. He's probably going to think it's competition. And don't... Well, that's giving his penis a lot of credit. <laughs> don't get into a tank with anything called a sawfish with your penis. Because <laughs> you might not leave with that penis. I just... Why? Oh. You know what? I, and they, they, they say it was premeditated. So this dude didn't just spontaneously decide I must be naked in there. He worked out a plan on jazz night. Was this Matthew McConaughey? <laughs> Don't ruin jazz night with your penis. It is true. Shark skin is like smooth one direction and jagged the other direction. So you swim the wrong, even if they don't bite you, you swim the wrong way up against them and you're going to shred something. Just, th this is not good for the sharks. Also, they probably had to like decontaminate that tank now. And there, there is video. You'll have to go and find it because none of my streaming services nor YouTube will permit me to put that video on there. You can go find it. He's just free balling it. Naked as you please. And of course it's a white dude. Of course it's a white dude. It's always a white dude. I just... It always... D Dan likes to watch a lot of horror movies in October. And I always crack up that... At, at the stupid trope that, like, the black person dies first in the horror movie. Because white people do the stupidest shit in reality. Yes! They definitely die first in the horror movie. And the black people would survive because when shit got weird, they would leave. Do you, do you know why do you know why Pet Cemetery is the perfect horror movie? I've actually never seen that never movie. Seen it. All right, it is it Pet Cemetery is entirely about not only white people doing the dumb thing, but white people doubling down on the dumb thing. Really? Yes. Well, they do just keep burying stuff there, right? Yes. Like that's the whole premise. No, tri he triples down. Spoilers. Like, he triples down on the dumb thing. Back from the dead, and then they just keep burying stuff there. Yes. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah, I never understood that particular horror movie trope, because if you follow any black writers on Twitter <laughs> around Halloween, yeah. every horror movie, they're like, why are white people like this? And you're like, you know what? I don't know. You know what? I'm He's fuck out of there. Here's here's this is definitely why are white people like this. 
Um, more naked, more rampage. Naked tweaker desecrates a baptismal font. Oh. Man pleasured himself in front of churchgoers. A North Dakota man tweaking on meth yesterday stripped off his clothes, went into a church baptismal font before emerging to walk toward the altar while masturbating on a front witnessed by 75 individuals attending Mass. 9 a.m. Mass Tuesday at Spirit of Life Church was interrupted by Zachary Burdick, 21, appeared in the entryway of the Roman Catholic Church. Female church employee called police after Burdick, disrobed, entered the font where he was masturbating facing the altar. Burdick, she added, then began walking down the aisle toward the altar while still masturbating. Witness Daryl Kilzer, 68, told police that Burdick began to splash, splash around in the holy water fountain. Kilzer added that Burdick later entered the sanctuary with his... <laughs> this quote is... Hardly put. He entered the sanctuary with his, quote, machinery hanging out and was, quote, pumping himself. Well, he, was, he was trying so hard to just gloss over the jerk in it. Yeah. The, the, oh. <laughs> Y'all know I I was raised super duper duper Catholic. Yeah. So and while I would not call myself a fantastic Catholic mm -hmm. these days, Stuff like this really does just make me cringe still, because, like, there's conditioning in there. That's not okay. Don't put your dick in the holy water. No. Don't jerk off. Jesus doesn't... Look, Jesus can already see you jerk off. All right? Yeah. He doesn't need you to come to his house for a he command performance. To, he doesn't need you to, like, scry for him. No. <laughs> And those poor people who just wanted to go to Mass don't eat it either. God, no! That's not what you need. That's, that is... And I'm here to tell you, any of you who are not Catholic, Catholic Mass is boring. It's not like the Baptists who sing exciting songs and clap and stuff. We are boring as fuck. Yes. We're very solemn. Half the place doesn't sing. It's usually cold. Like, it's not an exciting place to be no, at a Catholic not. Mass. It's not. The most exciting thing is figuring out when you're supposed to kneel, stand, and sit. Like, <laughs> so a naked dude jerking it down the aisle, that's a tonal shift. <laughs> Oh. Like, bring that down to the fucking Pentecostals who are into the charismatic shit. Meth is a bad drug. And they can handle you. Meth is... Catholics are not ready for that. Meth is a bad drug. Meth and... It is. Yes, in a Catholic church, the only people that do sing are the people that never should. That is true. You know, you know what meth has done to you, Zachary Burdick? You're only 21, and now whenever anyone Googles that name, which is a pretty distinctive name, the first thing that's going to come up is, this dude was jerking it in the holy water. Yeah. That's the rest of your life. And the article says they're going to have to have that baptismal font cleaned and sanitized. Just get a new one. <laughs> I promise you... No matter how much you assure your congregation that you have cleaned and sanitized it, nobody is going to want to dip their newborn in that. <laughs> hey, uh, was, that's what they're used for. Is this the one where More they? Babies. Is this the one where the guy w w was jerking it in the holy? No. Okay, yeah. Well, you need to get a new one. It's, you need to get a new one. You need you to need get a new one. You need to call it a day with that shit. Because from now on, everybody's going to know that this was the place where the dude was jerking it. And and by the way, Mr. Bird Dick, <laughs> if you sanctify your dick, because that's what, for those of you who are not Catholic, what baptism does, mm. 
is cleanse the baby of original sin. Because according to the Catholic Church, we are all born with the stain of original sin on our souls, and an unbaptized unbaptized babies go to limbo if they die. So, like, lay people can baptize miscarriages so that the baby doesn't go to hell. I know. So that's the idea, is to cleanse original sin from the baby's soul. And then when you get older, you do confirmation when you choose to be a Catholic. So you sanctified your dick. And you cleansed it of sin. And then you immediately started sinning. <laughs> what was it? You just, you're wasting everybody's time. Like, that's like the people that go to confession and then go out and act like assholes and go back to cheating on their wives. That's not how it works. And here's your lesson in catechism for today. Dirty, dark catechism. You know, I should just start calling this show white people. Because <laughs> white people, am I right? Because this next story is I think this is peak white people. This this Oh, is, unbaptized babies don't go to purgatory anymore. Well that's nice. Oh, there was a revision. How they just change the rules like that. Was there a revision? Did they have a new rule set came out? <laughs> and you should, shouldn't be able to do that. Like, did, did they nerf limbo? Like, did they move all those babies? <laughs> did they get grandfathered in or are those babies just fucked? Oh, all right. This anyway, I'm not that good a Catholic these days. Here we go. I call this next story peak white people. Uh oh. Gender reveal party ends in fight outside Applebee's. Hey, at least it wasn't a forest fire. Because that's what white people did last week. Gender reveal party at an Applebee's ended in police breaking up a fight outside the restaurant. Police were dispatched, were dispatched to the chain's Boardman, Ohio location after a fight between guests and restaurant staff escalated outside over who would clean up the mess. A manager at the chain's location said guests intended to reveal the gender of the baby by using confetti poppers inside the restaurant. She asked the party of about 20 to do the reveal outside so it would not disturb other patrons. After the reveal, blue confetti littered the sidewalk and nearby vehicles. That's when the manager asked partygoers to clean up the mess. Some of the attendees began yelling at the manager. Police said two members of the group threw menus at a hostess who was hit several times. Some of the group dispersed after the manager called police. The manager also found out that a bill for $31.81 had not been paid. I think we covered last week that the gender reveal party thing is weird on its face. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. If you're going to do this thing in, like, a public establishment, <clears throat> maybe don't do a fucking confetti cannon. Yeah, you, you, that's somebody else's property. Churches don't even let you throw rice at weddings anymore. Yeah, because somebody's got to clean that shit. We have this right. weird perception. They don't that... even let you throw bird seed anymore. Because the reason they stopped rice is because birds would eat it and explode because it would swell in their stomach. Yeah. Then you did bird seed. But then they realized we still have to clean that shit up. You're not allowed to do it anymore. Yeah. Th the thing is, we have this. I don't know if this is just America or this is everywhere. But we have this weird perception of the public space as not yeah. our problem. Yeah. So we it's just. Someone else's problem. So you do like this confetti cannon shit, and then you're like, well, now we'll just leave, even though you don't own that. You're not responsible for it. It is just America, because like I think I remember telling you in Ireland, we saw a sign that it's a five thousand dollar or five thousand dollar a euro fine for not picking up your dog poop in whatever little town we were in. Like I think the rest of the world takes it a little more seriously than we do. Yeah. For our fat entitled asses just assume some minimum wager will take care of it for us. And then just the, the cherry on top, not paying the bill. You motherfuckers. You fucked it. Like, I mean, you probably didn't hurt people's cars because it's confetti. But people, I mean, it's bad enough they're eating an Applebee's. <laughs> These people had their subpar dinner and now they have to come out and find your crap all over their car. It's 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 like, you know, you had a gender reveal party, but what you really did revealed, hey, I'm we're going to have another asshole. Yeah. Congratulations. It's, it's... an asshole. Oh. <sighs> well, here's what the world needs. Here's an Internet of shit debacle, which just I, I watched this unfold on Twitter. It was amazing. 
Um, have this is a thing that started happening now is we have these locks that are electronic. Yeah. Um, they are connected to the internet. I keep seeing the ads where you can tell your smartphone to set your whole security system, and I'm like, fuck that. And I don't want my shit talking to my shit. Like, no, that's how you die in movies. Well, it's also one of the things <sighs> they did not take into account is that uh, if you fuck up these things, you're effectively locking people in and out of their own homes. Yeah. Yale alarm app debacle causes chaos across UK homes. A system failure caused the Yale smart security app to crash and reportedly resulted in customers unable to control their alarms. On Wednesday, Yale told customers across the United Kingdom that unplanned network maintenance, that's tech speak for we done fucked up, right. might cause some customers to experience connection issues. That's also tech speak for we done fucked that's up. annoying when it's your internet. That's a fucking problem when it's your front door. The unforeseen issue also had consequences for customers who took to Twitter to complain of the app failures as well as express anger that Yale did not inform them of the problems. Um, yeah, one person's like, I'm really not happy. My husband sat outside for 30 minutes because he couldn't disarm the sodding alarm. Hence me sitting at work trying to do the same. Colleagues with the same issue having communication would be nice. Um... Rich Brewer says, we're stuck in the house now. This is not good enough, Yale. Um, what's on earth happening here? Can't remotely unlock the house for my children. So pretty much the worst case scenario that we have been saying is going to happen with these devices. Happen. With the See, and I don't like the remote unlock either because... Oh, yeah. One of the first ways I had to learn responsibility was when I had a house key. And I did forget it all the time. And my sister was fucking furious every time she had to come let me in because my dumbass forgot my house key. But that was one of the first ways I had to learn responsibility. And if kids don't carry a house key anymore and you just unlock the door whenever they show up, that takes a step out of that process of learning how to be a fucking person. These kids these days. Yeah, I don't like. No, this this is the thing we said. What happens when it fucks up and the door doesn't work anymore? And everyone said, oh, it'll be fine. And what happens when everything is a smart thing? And then the power grid goes down or it all fries and like literally nothing you own works. Because we're too fucking cool for things like house keys and refrigerators that just keep shit cold. I don't need my toaster to memorize shit. I just need it to toast a bagel. I like, just this. I don't need it to make decisions. What's really just galling me on this one is this is the exact scenario we said was going to happen. And they yeah. said, oh, no, it's fine. We won't. We've got it covered. How? It's no. covered. We've got top men on it. Who? Top it's men. If you release tech into the wild, somebody decides they have to fuck it up. Or sometimes it just gets fucked up. Because it's hot that day and the servers overheat or what the <clears throat> fuck ever. Like, And this is one of the things that gives me that little tightness in my chest because I know that in like 10 to 20 years... Our entire life will be dependent on this shit, whether we like it or not. Like, there won't be an option. Fuck you. I will buy mechanical locks until like, the day. Like, to just open your front door with a key or not have a fridge that has fucking Wi-Fi. Like, I, will, I will hoard technology that does like, not have... These things will no longer be things you can acquire, and we will increasingly just become... Like, and it just gives me fucking anxiety, man. You know, for all of these smart devices, dumb shit sure keeps happening. Yeah. Well, speaking of dumb shit, this, oh, this was a nasty one. Um, holy, I'm amazed nobody died. Belgian Air Force F-16 destroyed by fire during maintenance. Collateral da damage on second F-16. You're like, whoa, what happened? On October 12th, uh, 
a technician was working on an F-16 when he accidentally activated six the six barrel 20 millimeter Vulcan M61 um, M61A1 cannon of that F <laughs> F16. The cannon was loaded with some bullets, and some bullets hit another F16. That aircraft had just been refueled and was, together with another F16, being prepared for a training mission. Due to the bullets, the F16 AM exploded and damage the other F-16. Holy shit. That's a day at work you are never living down. Ever. You know, how, you know how we always say one of the rules of a gun is always assume that a gun is loaded? Yes. Dan says that constantly. That goes double for a fucking cannon! Yeah. Yeah. Ho! Oh. Wow. That's that's a big big mistake. Oh my how much do those fucking things cost? That picture. Oh my god. It's like Starscream after Burning Man. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. I know. It's Dan, Dan is in bed, guys. I'm sorry. Oh, he'd love it. He'll see this later. He'd love this. Yeah. Holy shit. And <sighs> why was the one F-16 pointed at the other F-16? Yeah. And why, if they were being serviced, were they loaded? Don't unload the cannon! On just... Don't like were you in a race and just made a pit stop? I don't think they do that with fighter planes. Why was everything fucking loaded if it was in for service? That seems really unsafe. But maybe there's an answer to that that makes it make sense. Maybe the military has to do things that way, I don't know, but that it seems to me that if you're going to have people tinkering with it, you should probably take out all the stuff that goes big bada boom. What's what's French for whoops? Sucker abuse. <laughs> Oopsie doesn't even begin to cover it. No. No. That is F-16 cost $18.8 million. Wow. Yeah. No. And the question is, like, was that technician a military person? Like, so, can this person be fired or are they just going to make his life hell forever? That's that's not You're just going to do all the push ups forever. <laughs> Apparently, oops in French is oops. Oh, except it has a U in it. Because <laughs> France. Belgium, though. Oh, someone got shit sweeping duty for life. And finally, I finally have proof of this. Remember I have told you over and over you can't just burn shit even if you own it? Yeah. Well, now everyone who doubted me on this, you cannot burn shit. You Man cited for burning hot tub inside his pool. Okay. Burning random items in a backyard pool, including a hot tub. Didn't work out well for a Myerstown man who is now facing a citation for illegal burning. See? Why would you burn a hot tub? Jonathan M. Gaiman, 38, was cited after police went to his house around 12 or 6 p.m. and found Gaiman burned a hot tub in an uh, in-ground pool behind his home. Other items were being burned as well. The police were notified because the fire got out of control due to the foam insulation in the hot tub, which caused the siding on the back of the residents to melt. I also feel like hot tubs are made out of a lot of things that when burned will create fumes that are not good for you. Or your neighbors. You didn't know you could burn a hot tub. It's fiberglass. Yeah, you, you and could, I feel like the fumes from that. Yeah, the, the fumes for that would... To say nothing of the foam insulation. Yeah. 
you're you're getting every cancer. Yeah, that's um, not safe, man. You, you have discovered new cancer. Guys, I assume the pool did not have water in it. They're very confused at how you burn something in a pool. The thing is, I don't know if you guys know this, but pools have don't just automatically fill with water when okay. they spring into existence. Like you can take the water out. Everybody in the channel is referencing the old Eddie Murphy. Too hot, the hot tub. Why would you burn a hot tub? <laughs> well, you know, I speak from experience of throwing out a lot of old garbage from this house. Um, sometimes the trash people won't take certain things. Did you decide to burn the freezer of evil? No. But, you know, it's that that's those instances where you put it out on the side of the road and they won't take it. I think they won't take a hot tub. That's when you just suck it up, call the 1-800-GOT-JUNK guys, and have them take it. Not, yeah. not set it on fire. No. And he apparently was burning others. He just made a big bonfire of garbage in the pool. You realize you're going to have to clean the pool, too. Yeah. Because you can't just put water back in that fucker. You probably can't get the fire hot enough to render everything down to ash, either. No, you're just going to have this skeleton so, and garbage, and you're going right, to have to... You're, gonna, you're still going to have large debris. You're just also going to have cancer. <laughs> you, you know what? And I'm, I'm, I would lay money this dude is single. He might be now. This is something that if you have a significant other, I don't care what your orientation, if you have a significant other and you try to do this and... <laughs> and they don't move out? Yeah, th this is one of those instances you, you, you don't get to do these things Yeah, when you have a partner. You'd like to think that when you put two heads together, one of them would be like, that's a bad idea. Don't, don't, what are you doing? Don't, let's, just, let's not do that. Just call the guy to tow it away. No, no, I'm going to put it in the pool and I'm going to burn it and then we can shovel it into garbage bags or something. No. See, if you have a, if you have a significant other, what the, the first thing they would do is they would just say, you're not, you're not doing that. But you're no, a you're not. Than I realized when we got together. What? You're a lot dumber than I realized when we got together. Exactly, yeah. We assess this relationship. Yeah. You, you don't get to do the stupid shit when you're in a relationship. I feel like this also fits the meme going around of this is why women love longer than men. <laughs> because I, I got to tell you, I don't really know any women who, when faced with the inability to get rid of a thing, their solution is... Burn that motherfucker. It, it's a thing. It's it's definitely a dude thing. Yeah, we're not... Guilty. We're, yeah, that's not... We're not... I have... I'm sure teen chicks are going to tell me I'm wrong, but, like, I personally don't know any women to whom that is a viable solution. And I ha I know... I have... Even myself, even knowing it's a bad idea... Here's, a, here's the thought process that will happen. Part of the back of my head will go, what if we just burn it? Even if I didn't, just, I'll be like, no, no, no. Well, we could. <laughs> no! Even you if I discount... One little gnash on one shoulder with horns, and one little gnash on one shoulder with a halo, and they're fighting about it. Even if I discount the idea, it's still, the idea always uh, appears. Always. Without fail. Even yeah, if I, I don't like that, do it. I feel like that comes with the testosterone. Even if I don't act on it, I still have the yes. fucking idea. Yeah. The He-Man flamethrower was not mine, Sam. That was my cousin who did that to me. I was on. I was the victim in that circumstance, not, <laughs> not the aggressor. I'm gonna have to like, tell. When I moved out of my old condo, I had a lot of big, big stuff that I couldn't bring down to the garbage room in the condo building. Some of it I did anyway, <laughs> and. <laughs> I had to suck it up and call the people that would haul it. Like, that's just what you have to fucking do in a society. So, yeah, the first thing we learned this week is just burn it is not, probably should not be your go-to. 
<laughs> that's that's not that's I mean if it's like leaves maybe okay. if maybe. you have a safe method of doing that and you enjoy the smell burn those leaves if you don't want to bag them up yeah if it's a hot tub who burns a hot tub <laughs> that's my question who the Why fuck even occur to you Shit, my, before I would do fire, I would get out, you know, like a sledgehammer and smash it into smaller pieces Seriously, and put those more efficient. Yeah, not fire. You know, what the fuck? Lazy shit. <laughs> We've learned always treat a gun as if it's loaded. Especially if it's a really big one attached to a plane. <laughs> yes. Check that shit. We've learned just because you connect it to the internet does not mean it was a good idea. So many things should not be connected to the internet. We're at the Jurassic Park level of internet where, like, your scientists spent so long deciding if they could that they never stopped to ask if they should. 20 Ex years from now, we're going to be like, why did we need Wi-Fi microwaves? That was dumb. Yeah, except it's not recreating dinosaurs. It's, it's you know, fucking internet dildos. Yeah. Um, We've learned that uh, these gender reveal parties are getting out of hand. Just have a baby shower like everybody else. Nobody cares about Nobody cares that much about your baby's genitals. And if they do, oh, they shouldn't they be your friend. Baby. Yes. Like, like, yes. Is it nice sometimes to know what kind of clothes to buy for the baby shower? Sure. But it's not that hard. Just get a t-shirt. That works for everybody. Something. Just buy something green. That's my go-to. I don't know. I just buy something green. I would buy something black, but that's just me. Um, that works too. My nursery when I was a baby was green and yellow. One, because they didn't do gender testing ahead of time back then. And two, because we're Irish as fuck. We, we've learned that Jesus does not need you to come to his house to see you jerk it. He can already see you. Yeah. He's already ashamed Jesus of you. He definitely doesn't want you to come in his house. No. <laughs> Oh, come on. No, that's not what that means. Oh. That's not what that means. It, no. Let the children come unto me. Not what that means. Not what it means. And finally, we've learned, Lee, don't, don't, the sharks don't need to see your dick. Jesus really doesn't don't. need to see your dick. The sharks don't need to see your dick. That chick on Tinder doesn't need to see your dick. Nobody. Nobody needs to see your Anthony Weiner's staffers don't need to see your dick. Nobody needs to see your dick. No. How is it we're almost, almost 20 years of this, and that simple lesson, that simple, easy, re easy to remember rule, still eludes so much of our. Po what are uh, is our children learning? <laughs> Unless specifically requested, you can just keep that shit in, a, in your pants or your kilt or whatever you're wearing. You can just assume nobody wants you to bust it out. Nobody. Unless they specifically ask you to do so. Nobody. Just, just, nope. <laughs> that poor Moray eel was just like, Fred? 